it's 2019. Is it time for a new era already? Once more, I will let you be the judge of that, but in any case, I'm here to present the great new Opus Projector 2019. And I will show you the best new features that it brings. So, we will start with a small one, but still a very nice feature. Um, very often when you're trying to uh, change the layout of your page, you accidentally move an object and, oh my, now you have to position it back. And this can be really annoying. So, we introduce a lock feature. Now this object cannot be moved anymore. And you can see in the project tree it has a new symbol showing that it is locked and cannot be moved. You are still able to move it with the properties, but um, accidentally going in here and typing a different value and then pressing enter, not really something that happened in our workflow, so probably not as important, but with the mouse it can happen quite easily. You can also multi-select objects, right click and lock them all. And now you see everything is locked. We also improved or reworked the visibility system. Now you probably all have worked with our predefined visibility variables and sometimes it can be a little hard to understand how this works with all these bits and everything and it can make things a little bit complicated. And we still kept that old system. So if you're used to that, to that, if you're thinking now, why destroy something wonderful? Don't worry, it's all still there. But we basically have a second system now, making things much easier for those developers not thinking binary. So for the new visibility, we do need a, a user variable. And we will take a numeric field connect that with this variable and say set as input and now we will use this variable drag and drop, is, drop, drag and drop it on this push switch and select add as visibility variable so now this variable is the visibility variable for this object and I can change it with the numeric field I will save the project start the simulation and show you how it works it's quite easy by default, this variable had a predefined value of zero. So of course, um, the object is invisible now. And any other value that it has, I can only scroll until 100 now, but any value that is not zero means that the object is visible. So zero, invisible, any other value, visible. Quite easy to understand, quite easy to use. So you just create variables drag and drop them on the object and say add as visibility variable. It, we, we, we couldn't make it more easy, I think. The next feature you can see on the welcome page. So we've redesigned this a little bit. We have a learn and discover with links to videos. We have the release notes as always. And on the welcome page, we now have all the most important things. Here you have the list of recent op, uh, projects and here we have a new feature which is an RSS feed. You can see that we made entries for some beta versions that were coming out and when the projector is released you will see news, news of new versions. We will see, don't worry, we will not spam you with unimportant messages. This is only for really important news. For example, if the Projector 2020 is out, maybe you would like to know about that. And this is exactly the place where you can look and where you will be informed. By default, this will refresh uh, once every hour. So um, we will not use your internet too much. And yeah, have a look now and then on this page and we will try to use it in a good way. In another video, I already showed the image library. So just in short, we now have the possibility to um, include folders that have images in them in this image library, and you have them all ready to be used.
So you don't need to create picture graphics all the time or browse to certain folders. You can just integrate them here, drag and drop from the library and say, for example, background image and that's it. So it makes handling images much more easy. Now let's go to the sample projects. We have uh, a couple of new sample projects. Probably the most important one is definitely the Pong project. So now you finally can play Pong on our devices. But what I want to show you is the RS232 project. So we created some JavaScript functions to work with the RS232 port. So it cannot be used uh, uh, just as the system console as it used to be, but you can now use it for data transfer. Um, just as a disclaimer, these functions are not synchronized. They are not very, very fast. So this is not for any kind of very quick data transfer but rather the, the, the use case that was in mind was to configure um, a serial printer. So please note that it is not uh, all too fast. So let's see how this looks. So this function, no, wait, let, let us start with the, with the initialization. We should have an init script on project init, yes. So we have to switch off the system console. So the first thing that has to be done is setting the console mode to one or two. And here we are creating um, an RS232 handler, handler with which we can perform, perform all the necessary functions. For example, with this one, we can read the RS232 buffer um, extract it as a string and then put this put it into uh, uh, an object or the other way we have here created an array with um, ascii strings and we are writing that with my rs to view power dot uh, write from from buffer so yeah basically that's almost it reading and writing you can also of course change the the baud rate by reinitializing uh, initializing the um, the handler with the new baud rate, so not very complicated, quite easy to use, and we are really looking forward to what you can do with it. Let's go back to the demo project right here. So um, we're staying in JavaScript. Another thing that we finally did is use the EEPROM memory. So every device has uh, about 28 kilobit sized EEPROM memory inside. And until now, it was just there, but never really could be used. And now we've created two functions, write EEPROM and read EEPROM, to be able to write to it and read from it, of course. So this is ideal for um, very important and long-term uh, data. For example, um, I think it can be used quite well as a bit of a um, copy protection. So we are, you can write some, some values somewhere in that EEPROM and in the initialization script of your, of your project then, you can read all these values and if, if it's the correct value that you find, it's one of your devices and if not, well, someone may have copied your project and you can show them that on a, on a page. So um, you can write numbers and you can write strings and read, of course. Um, as you can see, it's rather low level. So you have the position where you want to write, you have the size and you have the value. And when reading, you just give the position and the size and you tell the function um, what to expect here, whether it's a number or a string, and it will be put into this variable, and then you can use that variable for anything. So quite nice functions, and I'm sure a lot of customers have been waiting for this. 
definitely some customers have waited for this function. It's very simple. Um, basically, you already, already have seen it when I, when I showed you um, the visibility. So you can see that the numeric field has the focus and it is even in editing mode. And this is not because it's uh, connected to encoder, because when I press, I still can scroll to the other objects. Um, but I've uh, put this function on the onpage init event. And what it does, it sets the focus to the object with the ID 24, which happens to be the numeric field. And the second parameter is whether it should uh, uh, be in editing mode or in browsing mode, so whether the border should be yellow or green by default. So a very nice feature um, should uh, uh, give you possibilities to improve your navigation scheme. Next thing is something quite different. As you know, um, our Opus A6 Generation 2 and the Opus A8 can show the image of an Ethernet camera. And now we have made a tool to configure these cameras. So you connect the camera to your device. Um, you tell them uh, uh, the Ethernet port that you that it that it should look for it. You scan, and then the camera should be listed here. I don't have one connected right now, so I can just tell you. You will see some general information right here, and here you are able to configure. Um, the output of the Ethernet camera. So you should always um, select H.264 here because this is the only format that we can decode. And as a guideline, you shouldn't have a, a higher maximum bit rate uh, uh, than 50 megabit per second. Just a rough guideline. Depends on the rest of the project, of course. So you can also set the output resolution and uh, you can basically can make a little digital zoom by uh, changing the, the coordinates, uh, um, the, the, the frame that the camera will output. So this will be very great if you are using um, Ethernet cameras to configure that. Also, let me add a CAN protocol. We now have... Um, events for CAN mapping. So I'll just quickly make a mapping here. And you can see it has the property object status. By default it's of course active, but um, we are able to uh, change this on runtime. So at runtime you can make maybe a transmit uh, mapping object that is sending all the time. You can just switch that off. And also what is very interesting and has been asked quite often is I want to have an event when I have received a CAN message. Until now, we had to make workarounds by using um, on value change of variables, which works, but it's not really that elegant. So now we have finally the on mapping received event where you can put a, um, a script and this one is executed when uh, the, the message has been received and all the variables have their new value. So at this point you can make calculations or whatever you need to do. The final feature I want to show you has also been asked for qu for quite a long time and that's the import dbc file functionality. So we now can import uh, files from the uh, vector program. I will just quickly show you because there is another video about this. So first you handle the ECUs and then you have the CAN messages and the according variables. I'm just going to select everything here. You see it selects all the variables that are used as well. It shows no conflicts. Okay, so I click finish and that was it. I have just imported an ECU. I created 34 variables and 34 CAN messages. CAN messages all in one click. So here you can see all the variables are there. And if I go to the CAN mapping dialog, I have quite a lot of messages right now. So this one should make customers very happy. But please note, this feature um, has an extra license and has to be bought. So 
contact your vendor or us if you want to purchase this feature. So that's it for the new features of the Opus Projector 2019. There are a couple of more, of course, and there are many, many improvements. We fixed a lot of things. We've improved data handling, page loading. We can, you can move objects much faster around. So a lot of optimizations that we did. And in my opinion, it is the best version up to date. Um, whether it's a new era, as I said in the beginning, is up to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.